Hi, I'm Komi Kadoya. My team and I have created an intuitive method for controlling a complex 3D arm. Unlike conventional solutions, such as re-entering a set of points on a computer or using multiple physical joysticks to control each joint, our solution allows anyone to simply pick up a controller and move it as if it was an extension of their hand. As you can see on the drawing on the board, the robotic arm also replicates my movements and draws a picture over on the board. Before I demo a couple more cool applications of this control method though, I want to show you the process of how we ended up here. Obviously, we could have just bought a 6-axis robotic arm, but we wanted a bit of a challenge. And also, $10,000 was way too much money for an average high schooler. Therefore, we had to find a more cost-effective option. We were fortunate enough to find a 3D printable schematic under the Creative Commons license that would be meet our needs and we started printing. Of course, we still needed all the electronics, chains, gears, and other components. But our final cost ended up being just over $1,700. A lot less money than to purchase a pre-made robot arm. Once we got the parts printed, we used sandpaper and heating tools to fix the printing artifacts. Then we attached the base to the table and carefully installed components like the stepper motors, sprockets, belts, limit switches, and bearings according to those specifications. As we were building the robot, we also set up the electronic controller. We built the entire system into a small box including things like um, power supplies, motor controllers, and on top of that we also worked on transmitting the signal from control box to individual motors and limit switches through terminal connectors. When the physical construction of hardware came to an end, we moved on to building the software. Although we initially planned to write all the code by ourselves, we discovered that it was a lot more challenging than we thought. Uh, things like kinematic involved a large number of matrix and vector manipulation, which are beyond our capacities. In the end, we decided to modify the source code of an open source 6 axis robot arm controller to fit our needs. We discovered that Valve had a software development kit open for downloads and we decided to repurpose their VR controller as hand position trackers. The 3D live position information of the controller will be sent to our main controller and processed through the open source robotics arm software to figure out how much each of the six joints should move in order to get the end of the arm, called the end effector, to correct position in 3D space. This information then is sent to the Arduino in the electronic enclosures, which also receives a signal from the limit switches which stop the arm from moving too far than it actually can. Once the Arduino microprocessor calculates the acceleration and the deceleration of each joint, it will send a series of steps into the motor controller over a certain time interval. Once the step is received by the motor controllers, each one will send a pulse of electricity to the step motor and then the motor will move a certain small preset amount between 1 28th of a degree to 1 8th of a degree, depending on the joint. This process is repeated a couple of dozen times per second, resulting in this magical motion as we can see. The control method we devised has multiple applications such as serving as a replacement for the current control methods for robotic surgery. Since they use a set of physical control sticks, current systems are unadaptable to the surgeon's needs. Therefore, current surgeons must be able to move their hands very precisely over very short distances. Compared to that, our system is able to map the dimensions of the physical world to any scale we want, allowing surgeons to use big hand motions to execute precise robot maneuvers. Another use case of the robotic arm is improving the remote presence experience. Currently, Remote presence devices consist of a camera and a screen on wheels. This offers little to none maneuverability to the user since they are unable to open doors, write on boards, nor use their hand gestures, which believe it or not is a very important part of communication. The main reason why more remote presence devices don't have arms comes down to two reasons, cost and complexity of control. Our system solves both of these issues by providing an intuitive way to control a cost-effective arm. 
Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of this first video. Since we only have highlighted the technical part of this project, we have four more short, short videos to share the unique challenges we faced as high schoolers working on such unique research projects. This video covers everything we've accomplished in the first year and if you're interested in what we're doing for year two, click here. If you want to understand the process and benefit of involving students and faculty with many interests, click here. And if you want to learn about all the problems we've encountered, click here. And if you want to know about the environment of how what we worked in and how we got funding for the project, click here. Thank you.